The easier part is multiplying and dividing. And on page seven, it says when you multiply and divide measurements, you must report your answer with the same number of significant figures as the measurement which has the fewest significant figures. That's really easy. And it shows you the example problem, 15.423 uh, centimeters divided by 102 centimeters, and you get this huge long answer. But now you just go back and count. The first one you dealt with had five significant figures. The second one you dealt with, 102, has three significant figures. So you're just gonna pick three significant figures out of there for your answer. And so your answer is gonna be 0 0.151. And I didn't roll up the last one because the number behind it is a two. Always look, okay? But the answer is just uh, 0 0.151 and then put your centimeters in. The next example, it's got 7.0 inches divided by, or excuse me, times 4.209 inches. And so how many significant figures does your answer have to be in in that one? How many significant figures? Look, look closely. That was good, Kira. Look closely, though. That one actually has a zero to the right of the decimal at the end of the number. So there's two significant figures. That's 7.0, right? You're counting that as one. And so I appreciate it. You're right about you picked that one. The trick is because this is to the right of the decimal at the end of the number, it fits both criteria. Therefore, that's a significant figure. So your answer would be in two significant figures. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now. This is probably the hardest thing you're going to learn in chemistry, is dealing with the significant figures. But you're going to be using it all the time. Everything you do, you're going to be using significant figures. So by about the third chapter, you're going to get pretty good at it because you'll have done it for six weeks or so. Okay? Uh, I want to tell you that most of the mistakes that we found in the third edition of the other book was on significant figures. I say that to encourage you because I'm telling you the experts mess up significant figures. Okay? If I stand up here and do it wrong, I want you to say, Mrs. Frades, is that the right number of significant figures? Because it's something you just kind of have to practice. So don't feel badly if it's tough for you right now. It's that way for all of us. And you use them in physics too. Really, all upper science. Well, think about it. You would have to yeah. because you have to be able to show the precision of the instruments that you're using. Because let's be honest, the, the, the scientists, when they do their research, then you publish it and you send it to the rest of the world so that they can build on what you've learned. That's how the scientific community is supposed to work. Yes? Well, you have to use this in weather, right? I would think so, yes, because you're showing the precision yeah. of the instruments. Absolutely. This is a concept you will use. Absolutely. Okay, so on page eight, when you go back to the comprehension problems, uh, number four, what is the correct answer for the measurement? Uh, 45.5 centimeters is multiplied by nine centimeters. How many significant figures have to be in the answer to that? We have 45.5 centimeters multiplied by nine centimeters without even doing it. How many significant figures must my answer have? One, the answer has to be in one significant figure. And so when you do this in your calculator, let's see, I can do this. The answer in my calculator comes out at, oops, I can do it. Right? That's the answer. Notice that centimeters squared because I'm multiplying. If I was multiplying or dividing, these are treated just like a variable, just like an x or a y. When you multiply them, you get squared. When you divide them, they cancel, or, you know. So I have to do this in one significant figure. How would I write that in one significant figure? Good. That would just be 400 centimeters squared. Now you could go to scientific notation if you wanted to. You could do that. But there is no need because that already has two zeros that are not significant figures. They're placeholders. They tell you that it's 400s, but they're not significant figures because they are not to the right of the decimal at the end of the number, and they are not between two significant figures. Let me show you something that is not in your textbook, and it is what the colleges are using. And the only reason I know this is my daughter took college chemistry recently, and it was taught in her college chemistry, and I loved it. I thought it was great. Let's say you had to write 400 
as three significant figures. There is a shorter way to do it than writing 4.00. Let's just do it. Let's, let's use 100 and say you had to write 100 in three significant figures. Well, you can't just write this, can you? Because that's not three significant figures. So what the book will teach you is that you have to do this to write it as three significant figures. But what the colleges are letting you do now, at least my daughter's college did, is they will put a decimal here. That shows you it's three significant figures, doesn't it? Because is there any other reason to put a decimal at the end of that number? No. Isn't that neat? So that's a little shortcut. I like shortcuts. That's why I liked upper math, because I like shortcuts. And so, yeah, I'm all about them. And so that's a shortcut that you can use, OK? And, and you can use it here. Why? Because we're doing chemistry to prepare you for college, because I'm not here just to have fun and torture you, OK? So if it helps you prepare for college, that's what I'm doing. And that's what they're using at some of the colleges. So I thought that was cool. Yes? Um, so I understand the significant figures, but wouldn't it sometimes be important to like know that it was 409.5 in chemistry to know the exact? You know, I feel the same way you do. So personally, in some cases, I write it down, like if I'm doing data. But you're not going to use that. OK, that's just how it is. It's a good question. And I do. Sometimes when I'm doing stuff for myself, I'll write it down because I'll want to know what it actually was. Because I want something closer to the reality of it. OK. All right. Oh, yes, Kira. How did you get 409.5 to round down to 400? Very good. OK. Very good question. To run, and, and what was it, centimeter squared? Yes. OK. All right, Kira's question, very good question. How do we ro roll that to um, 400? Because we have to roll to one digit, which is here, and this next digit is a zero. So that's where it rolled to 400. That is a very good question. And you will have situations like that, where you'll go, well, wait a minute, there's a nine over here. Well, but it wasn't the ne next digit. And so like if this digit is even a four, let's say this was 449.5 it would still be 400. So that's the kind of thing that would bug me. Because I'd be thinking immediately, money. No, I want the $49.50. You know what I'm saying? So come on. All right, so I'm with you. But, but that's a really good question. So even if this was this, it would have rolled to 400. Because the next digit is a four. OK? Very good question. I appreciate your questions. They are excellent. Yes, so Aaron. Over 450, it would roll up to. Yep, if it was four. If it was even 450, it would have rolled to 500. You see how, with one significant figure, things get very inaccurate. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, but it's still how it's done. Yes, Abigail. And then the two zeros after the four are not significant. Absolutely not. They're strictly mathematical placeholders to tell us we're talking about the hundredths place. And we could have written it as four times 10 to the second to do the same thing. Absolutely. That's how you know. If you could, if you could turn around and write it in scientific notation without those zeros, then that kind of gives you a clue, doesn't it? But I'd rather you just know the three rules. It's easier. OK. You're doing a great job. I'm real proud of you. Now, on page nine, he starts in with converting. And he calls it the factor label method. And I call it something else. I call it dimensional analysis, because your dimensions, which are your units, actually help you to get through. And in physical science, the people that had me for physical science, I teach this as times line. And some of you have heard me say that before. And some of you are looking at me like, what is she talking about? I do this differently than the book. And I'd really like you to learn it the way I'm teaching it, because this will literally drive very complicated chemistry problems. If you just know how to set it up and how to start, it will carry you through the problem without you knowing a whole lot. I don't know about you, but that sounds really good to me. OK, and that's how I get through it, is I know that if I have the information I need, that I can work the process, and the process works. And the process starts here. So uh, let's say he gives you there on the top of page 10 that 2.54 centimeters equals 1 inch. And that is absolutely true. That means because 2.54 centimeters equals 1 inch, I can write that with the centimeters on top. Or I could write that with the centimeters on the bottom. Either way, 
This is one, isn't it? It's one. If I put 12 inches over one foot, or one foot over 12 inches, it's a one. I like to call them in chemistry a funky looking one. All of these are funky looking ones. And chemistry is all about building some really funky looking ones. Okay, you're gonna make some really strange ones in chemistry. But it's all about it and that's what that's what dimensional analysis is about, is about multiplying things with funky looking ones so that you can get from one place to another because you use this one in between and can't you multiply anything by one and not lose the value? Oh, yeah, Snoopy dance, okay? And so it's powerful. It is so powerful that you can do this. You never thought of a one as being so powerful, but it really, really is. So with that thought in mind, because like I said, I like to teach the process, not exactly the same way he does, <laughs> and those of you that have your physical science, you've heard this before, and this is going to follow all the way through chemistry and physics, okay? And that's why I like it, um, is you write down, you, okay, you read the problem. No, that's not right. You pray. You breathe. Because oh, I'm doing a word problem. <gasps> okay, all right. Pray then breathe. Okay, or breathe and pray. You don't want to pass out while you're praying. So breathe and then pray. All right, and then... Read the problem twice. The first time, you're letting your brain get used to the idea. The second time, you're looking for the given and the get to. You people that have physical science with me, these are the same steps. You're looking for the given and the get to. This is going to be all the way through, OK? That's why I teach it so hard in physical science. I'm trying to get it through. OK, once you do that, you write down the given and the get to. So, and then we do our times line. So let's look at it. Comprehension check. Number a laptop computer is 33.56 centimeters wide. How many inches wide is it? So we write down the given and the get to. The given is 33.56 centimeters. How do we know it's the given? Because it's a number. The get to is where we're trying to go. And in this case, we're trying to go to how many inches is the laptop? There's the given, there's the get to. We've written them down. All right, so now we write the given again. You won't always write it, the given again in chemistry. Sometimes they'd get too long. So we'll, you know, but this is just general conversions. Now you're going to go what I call times line. Times line. You write the given. You write times line. Can you see? Okay. After you write times line, you physical science students, what goes down here? Centimeters. Centimeters. Whatever unit is here always goes down here. Why? Because we want it to cancel. It'll go away. Where are we trying to get to? We're trying to get to inches because we want the centimeters to cancel and the inches to come over here because that's what we're trying to answer, correct? So now you put the numbers where they belong and we know that 2.54 centimeters equals one inch. Now David, this is where you, what we talked about comes in. These have an infinite number of significant figures because it's actually a conversion factor that's given to us. We do not take them into account in our answer. We strictly use the measured number in our answer to get it. So we're gonna take this with our calculator. 33.56 divided by 2.54. So we have 13.21259. Okay, <laughs> and then this is going to be centimeters leave. We're left with inches, inches. We need one, two, three, four significant figures. One, two, three, four. I look at the two, the two does not roll up, so I lose it right there. And that would be our answer. Does everybody see it? Okay, um, so multiplying and dividing, that's the easy part. Turn over to page 12, please. On page 12, it tells you the prefixes, and kilo means times a thousand. The bolded ones are the ones you have to have memorized. Centi, there are a hundred cents in a dollar. Centi means, and there's a hundred years in a century, there's a hundred centimeters in a meter. Okay? Milli means a thousandth. So there's a thousand years in a millennium. Okay, so, and what does that mean? Well, with our meter stick, if you break this into a hundred pieces, which is what it is, then those are the centimeters, and you see there's a hundred of them. When we cut those each into ten more pieces, there's literally a thousand millimeters on this marked off. Okay, when it comes to volume, this is a liter. If we did, oh, and a kilometer, a kilometer, kilometer, is a thousand of those meter sticks. 
I had one chemistry class that just refused to get it. I took them out in the heat. When I was teaching at Christian school, I took them out in the heat and made them walk off a thousand meters. They never forgot again what a kilometer was. Okay? They got it after that. This is a, a liter. I had them do this too. We did a thousand of these and we made basically like a hot tub. Okay? That's a kiloliter. And then if you wanted a millimeter, milliliter, that's what one of these is. This is, this is, you'd have to do this a thousand times. You'd have to do this a thousand times to fill this. Okay? That's a milliliter. And no, well actually, yeah, I did. That class was having problems. And then this, you'd have to do a hundred times into here. So this is a centiliter, because it's a hundred of them to make this up. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so the visual, I don't know about you, but the visuals help me. Um, did you have time to make them do that a thousand times? Because I actually was their teacher. So I had them five days a week for an hour, and they weren't getting it. So I was making a point. We still finished the chemistry book before the end of the year, and I had two weeks to teach them Bible at the end of the year. It was great. OK. Um, I was going to go on and teach them more chemistry, and they told me they wanted to do Bible instead. Uh, let's see. Go over to page 13, please. Here, at the top of the page, it says the diameter of a U.S. dime is 17.9 millimeters. How many meters is that? You're going to use the same technique where you write the given times line. Okay, so we'll be using that a lot. We've already played with scientific notation, so we've actually done that together. Um, let's look at page 15. Well, I actually showed you that already, where we have the centimeters multiplied together and we got centimeters squared. Remember that the units, which are called derived units, they multiply or they cancel. So you want to make sure that you don't just uh, leave them hanging out there. Where it gets a little interesting is where you get into volumes and you're converting between things. And let me just show you because you're going to be working with that this week. So look over on page 19. On the top of page 18, I just don't want you to have trouble this week. You know what, I'll just show you. Comprehension check number nine. It says 7.4 liters into centimeters cubed. Oh. 7.4 liters, and we are going to centimeters cubed. And they've already told us that one centimeter cubed equals one milliliter. We have that memorized. Okay, and we'll come back to that next week. Okay, so that's my bridge. That's my bridge to get from liters to centimeters. So I know I've got to get this to milliliters because I got to get to this bridge. Does everybody see it? Yeah. And so I'm going to go 7.4 liters, and at first I want to get to milliliters, so I'm going to put liters down here because it's here, so it always goes there. And I want to get to milliliters. That's where I'm trying to get to. Okay, and I'll, I'll do this step by step for you. Those of you that know me, I like to give the big guy a one, unlike Jay Wiles. This is the big guy. This is the milliliter. So I go one, 10 to the third, okay? Put my numbers in. So this is gonna give me 1.4 times 10 to the third milliliters, isn't it? Now I'm gonna go times line, and I want to go from that, well, I know that that's equal to centimeters, isn't it? This is one milliliter equals one centimeter cubed, doesn't it? Right? I know that. How do I know that? I have it memorized. We're done. That's not what I wanted to show you, though. Let me show you this. If you had one meter and you, no, one meter cubed, and you want to know how many centimeters that is, okay? So you want to know how many centimeters that is. I want to make sure you can do that. Okay, watch, watch. You have one meter cubed times line. You know how to do meters here and centimeters here, right? The trick is you know what it is on a linear, not on a cubic. So you know that in every one meter there's a hundred of these, right? But we need to cube it, cube the whole thing. Yeah. You've learned that in math. So you're going to go one meter cubed down here, and you're going to go 10 to the sixth centimeters cubed up here, and then do it. Are you guys okay with that? Okay. We'll do the lab next week. Have a good week.